Welcome, ladies and gentlemen. So what I'd like to do is show you how to um, solve and graph multi-step inequalities. Now, just like we have done for solving the other inequalities, multi-step inequalities is going to be no difference. We're going to treat them just like we're solving equations. However, again, just like our solution, unlike, unlike equations, when you have a solution and your x is finally isolated to get like x equals 1, now we're going to have solutions where x is like greater than 1 or x is less than or equal to 1. So therefore, we're going to have to use a um, we're going to have to use a line graph to be able to represent our solution. Um, the process, we're still going to use inverse operations, everything that we use for multi-step equations. Uh, the only difference here is, again, that remember when you multiply or divide by a negative, um, when you multiply or divide by a negative number, um, then therefore you are uh, going to have to make sure you flip the sign. However, what's nice about multi-step equations, you have a variable on both sides, you can determine if you're going to have a negative value or if you're going to have to divide by a negative number or not. I'll explain a little bit more as we get into it. So for instance, like in the first example, I have 21x plus 7 is less than 3x plus 16. So the main important thing that I always like to do is always get the variable on the same side. We have a variable on the left side of the inequality and the right side of the inequality. Before we even start solving, we want to get the variables on the same side of the inequality and simple, or first simplify it, which that both sides are already simplified. Now get the variables to one or the other side and then solve using your inverse operations. So the first thing, what I was talking about was you know, you could either get the variables on the left side or the variable on the right side. Let's just pretend I got the variable if I wanted to get the variables on the right side. So therefore, I subtract 21x. Well, what happens with that is then you're left with 7 is less than negative 18x plus 16. Now you have a negative coefficient. So when you're solving for x, you'd have to divide by a negative number, which would now be flipping the sign. However, you don't have to do it that way. You can decide where you want your variable to be, a variable on the left side or a variable on the right side. And I, you know, we always like to say we want the variable on the left side because that's, you know, we read from left to right. However, I always like to just get the variable so it's positive because I don't like dividing by that negative and flipping the sign because if you watched my previous video, I even said make sure you flip the sign and I forgot to do it and it wasn't until the end of the video that I noticed, oh crap, I made that mistake. And if you're one of those students that likes to take your test and not always check all your work, you would have been like me, which I did in high school, and get those problems wrong. So what I would like to do is I'm going to get the variable on the left side. Um, therefore, I'm going to subtract a 3x on both sides. And really, the reason why I want to get it on the left side is not because I wanted to have it on the left side, uh, but because now my, uh, my coefficient is positive. Therefore, I will not have to be doing any flipping of the signs. So now, by getting the variables on the same side, I now have a two-step equation, which now, again, I can use my inverse operations here. So here I will subtract 7, subtract 7. Therefore, I have 18x is less than 9. Then I will divide by 18, divide by 18. And I have x is less than 1 half. Now, to go ahead and graph this, basically just going to go ahead and use a nice little number line here. Um, again, 1 half, though, is not an integer, right? So usually when we're doing our number line, we create use our number line, we use integers to represent them. And you could use fractions if you wanted to, but I think it's just easier to still continue with integers. So I'm going to choose two in I'm going to start at integers that are close to 1 half. For instance, 0, 1, 2, 3, and then to the left, negative 1, negative 2, negative 3. Now remember, basically what we do is we make a nice big circle here. Since it's x is less than 1 half, that's going to be open. And then x is less than 1 half. So we have negative numbers or we have the positive numbers. Well, obviously, all numbers that are uh, less than 1 half is going to include, you know, oops, what am I doing? It's not at 0. So where is 1 half? Well, here's 0, here's 1. 1, one half is going to be right in between them two. Okay, And it's not like exact, but it's pretty close. Then I'm going to represent all the points that are less than, which is going to be to the left. Then include a nice arrow saying, as I continue going to the left, all those values are going to be true. And I just wanted to make sure. Yes, I did. OK. All right, so now let's get into the next one. Again, we have another opportunity. But now in this case, getting the, getting the variable to the left side is going to make that negative. So I'm actually going to solve this problem. So my variable is going to be on the right side. And that's going to become a little bit of an issue for a lot of you, because it's not something that you're as much used to. So now I have 18 is less than or equal to 7x plus 4. Well, now, I'm, again, I'm just going to use my inverse operations. It's OK that the variable is on the right-hand side. You look at your variable, and you see my variable is being added by, multiplied by 7 and being added by 4. So we undo addition and subtraction first. So I have 14 is less than or equal to 7x. 
Now, undo multiplication by 7. So I divide by 7. And I get 2 is less than or equal to x. Now, a lot of times, that's kind of difficult for students to, um, for di difficult for students to graph. So if you can get used to it, I would recommend rewriting it so it's with the variable on the left-hand side. And you can do that at the end. You're not, th these are equivalent. It's just the x on the left side. It makes it a little bit easier to graph. So now I go ahead and create my number line. Um, again, I'm going to start at 2, which is my solution, or part of my solution. Then I'll pick numbers to the left that are going to be smaller. OK, so again, we make a nice big circle at 2. So here, it was an integer, or it wasn't an integer, so I had to go in between them. Here, it's exactly at 2, so I make a nice big circle. This is x is greater than or equal to, so I'm going to fill it in. And the reason why I chose this problem as well, because a lot of students, they get, too used to, they get so used to graphing, and they say, oh, the arrows point to the left, you graph to the left. Arrows point to the right, you graph to the right. But that only works when the variable is on the left-hand side. Here, if you, if you didn't rewrite it, you would just be looking at 2 is less than or equal to x. So you'd say, oh, you graph to the left. But again, that's only the case when the variable is on the left-hand side. So when I switch it so the variable is on the left-hand side, you can see that the arrow is pointing to the right. That means I'm going to choose all the, the solutions are going to be all the solutions to the right of 2. And let's see, does that make sense? Is 3 greater than or equal to 2? Yes. Is 4 greater than or equal to 2? Yes. So all the solutions that make it true are to the right. And just make sure you continue that arrow because that number line is infinite. All right, so are your solutions going to the right infinite. Now we have what we call a little multi-step equation. So we have some parentheses. So in these two, both the left side and the right side were already simplified. We just need to get the variable to the same side. In this example, um, my left side is not simplified. So the first thing I'm going to want to do is apply distributive property to simplify it. So when I apply distributive property here, I get 2x minus 8 is greater than 4x plus 6. Now it looks like one of these problems. I need to get my variable to the same side. So again, I'm going to follow the same thing I did over there. And if I subtract 4, I'm going to have a negative 2. So I'm going to want to solve for the variable on the left side again. Subtract 2x. Now I have a negative 8 is greater than 2x plus 6. Now I just use my inverse operations again. I see my x is being multiplied by 2, added by 6. So I subtract a 6 on both sides. Therefore, that gives me a negative 14 is greater than 2x. Divide by 2. And I get negative 7 is greater than x. Or I could also rewrite that as x is less than 7. So I kind of ran out a little bit of a space here, but that's OK. I'm going to create my number line. OK, we'll start at 7. Going to the right will be larger numbers. And going to the left is going to be smaller. OK, you can kind of see this is just like the other one, where it's going to be less than. So that's going to be an open circle. So I go at 7, leave it as open circle. And then what are all the values that are less than 7? Is it 6, 5, and 4, or 8, 9, and 10? Well, it's going to be all these points and all the values continuing in this direction. So I shade these, and then with a nice big arrow. All right, in this last example here, uh, you can see now I have parentheses on both sides. So before I can even get my variable to the same side or use my inverse operations, i got to simplify both sides. So now I'm going to apply distributive property to both of them. <sighs> By applying distributive property here, I now obtain 4x minus 2 is less than or equal to a negative 6x, negative 6x uh, minus 9. So now we have a negative uh, variable. But again, as I kind of mentioned, we have options. We don't have to divide by that negative. I, if I get my 6, if I add a 6x to both sides, I'll eliminate the variable on the left hand side and I'll, or right hand side. I'll now have my variable on the left hand side, and it will be positive. So guess what? That's what I'm going to do. So I will add 6x, add 6x. By doing that, I'm now left with 10x minus 2 is less than or equal to uh, a negative 9. Then I just use my two-step um, equation. So I'll add 2, add 2, and I'm left with 10x is less than or equal to uh, negative 7. Divide by 10, divide by 10, 
x is less than or equal to. Now, negative 7 divided by 10, you could keep it as the fraction form, or you could use your calculator or just know that that is the same thing as um, negative 0.7. So now we're kind of dealing with the decimal if you want to. Because um, a lot of times, you know, if dealing with the fraction, if you don't know like where the fraction is, like 1 half, that's kind of obvious. It's between 0 and 1, right? Um, but sometimes you might have some more difficult fractions. So I would either recommend rewriting them as a mixed number is really helpful to be able to identify where it lies on the number line, or rewriting it as a decimal to determine. So obviously, negative 0.7 is going to be between 0 and negative 1. So I'll create my number line. And the integers that I'm going to have in the middle is going to be 0, negative 1, negative 2, negative 3, negative 4, positive 1, positive 2, positive 3. OK, so again, I'm just going to estimate. It's not going to be exact. Just like when I did 1 half, you know, it's not going to be perfect. Um, but I'm not, I, I'd rather create my number line with integers um, rather than with decimals. But you might have a number line, especially like on a test or homework, that has everything broken down in decimals. Well, then you would use, then use where negative 0.7 would be. So I'm going to make a nice big open circle. Now again, note that this is less than or equal to, so therefore it's going to be closed. Then all the values that are going to be less than negative 0.7. Well, remember, think of like negative as like owing money. So if you owe 0.7, that'd be like 70 cents, right? So if you owe 70 cents or if you owe $4, which one do you have more money with? Well, you'd have more money at, um, at owing 70 cents. So therefore, all the values to the left are going to be smaller. And that's where you try to find x is less than or equal to negative 0.7. And just make sure you complete the arrow. So there you go, ladies and gentlemen. That is how you solve and graph compound inequalities. Thanks. But not compound inequalities, multi-step inequalities.